angels. Angels help us in their inner hearts. The angels are right here and Jesus is in the middle. Where does Jesus live? Right there. Right where? Right there. On the floor? Uh -huh. Some of the Ten Commandments are? Do not punch, do not lie, do not kick, do not spit. What do you think God looks like? Mm, so tall. Colin, can you explain sanctification? And what does God do all day? She, she stays in our hearts all day. How old is God? 100. Can you tell me how old do you think God is? <laughs> Why did they eat an apple? Because they wanted to eat something to eat. How many commandments are in the Ten Commandments? How many numbers? Do <laughs> you know what happened to Adam and Eve? They ate a snake. <laughs> you want to tell me the story of Samson? He died. Somebody cut his hair and he, he wasn't strong anymore. Why did his hair give him strength? Because he was big like a grown up. How did uh, Moses give the Ten Commandments? He worked up a really tall island. I have a toy beast and I have a toy bell. Is that story in the Bible? Yeah. What book of the Bible is, it, is that story in? Um, a princess one. Do you know the story about Adam and Eve? Uh -huh. They died. Because they were super, 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 super old. <laughs> <laughs>
Blessed is the man who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But the man who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night, he is like a tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, prospers. How sharp is your thinking, your ability to think and process information? We played a mind game in church today called Mind Trap. Some of you have seen it before. Here's a couple of questions for you to uh, chew on. If I am a man and Jason's son is my son's father, what relationship am I to Jason? And another is, how could you give someone $63 using six bills or coins? without using $1 bills or loonies? Of course, the answer to the first one is that you're Jason's son, and I'll let you figure that out on your own. The second answer is that you would use one $50 bill, one $5 bill, and four $2 toonies. That would add up to $63. For those of you who watch Dateline, here's a tricky mystery. Mrs. Shady is lying on a bed, and on the floor beside is a pair of scissors. The scissors were instrumental in her death, yet there is no trace of blood. Mrs. Shady's body reveals no signs of any cuts or bruises. How could she have been murdered with a pair of scissors? And of course, for those of you who've watched Dateline, you know that she was sleeping on a waterbed and the scissors were used to poke the waterbed and she drowned to death. Here's a final question that we used. Something extraordinarily unusual happened on the 6th of May, 1978 at 12.34 p.m. What was it? And the answer was that at that precise moment in time, the day and time could be noted as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My wife says that my mind is full of useless trivia, and that may be so, and maybe I just help your mind along the same way. The Apostle Paul writes uh, letters from a prison cell. We call it letters from jail, and we've been studying that over the next little while, and he talks quite a bit about how we think. It's easy to get negative and think negative thoughts when you're in desperate and uh, dire situations. But the Apostle Paul gives us some really key guidelines into our thinking, both bad and good. Here are some of the ways that Paul describes negative thinking. He says, all of us used to live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. That's Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 3. We can follow the thoughts of our flesh and of our earthly mind. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17 says, I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9 says their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is their shame. 
their mind is set on earthly things. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21 says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. And Colossians 2, 18 says, do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. We are told throughout scripture in many different places that bad or wrong thinking will affect us physically, emotionally, and certainly spiritually. But the, Apol the Apostle Paul gives us some very good, healthy guidelines as to how to think. Now, we have to remind ourselves that the Apostle Paul was in jail. It would be very easy to think negative thoughts when you were in prison, perhaps with no thought of ever getting out. You would focus on the jail, on the bars, on the, the darkness, perhaps on the bad food or the corrupt company. And we would be uh, entitled to think all those things. But the Apostle Paul encourages us to think differently. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23, he reminds us to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Romans chapter 12 encourages us not to be squeezed into the world's mold or way of thinking, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. How? How do we do that? How do we allow our minds to be transformed? Again, the Apostle Paul gives us some very, very good keys. And of course, I'm reminded today as we talk that there are people who struggle with mental illness and there are people who suffer from mental illness. Mental illness can be defined as the inability to control your thoughts. And if by chance you're watching today and you're struggling with uncontrollable thoughts of harming yourself or harming someone else or uh, feelings of not being good enough or whatever those thoughts may be, we encourage you to get help, to contact a counselor or a doctor and they can help you with such patterns of thinking. But to those of us who can think rationally and think clearly and we can control our thoughts, the Bible gives us some very clear keys as to how we should think in a way that would be positive and uplifting. The first one would be that we should focus on the spiritual. Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 to 4 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. It's very easy to focus on the negative circumstances in our lives, the difficulties we face, the difficult people that may be in our lives. And you do not have to be mentally sharp to see the problems that exist around you. But the Bible encourages us to lift up our eyes. The Bible encourages us to focus on spiritual things. And we want to encourage you to do that. Another key to good thinking is that we should focus on others before ourselves. Again, in Philippians, we read that, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others others. It's very easy to become self-focused, to only look at those things that affect us and how we are treated and how people talk to us and how people react to us. But if we are wise, 
we will learn to get our eyes off ourselves and begin to focus on others, to see the needs of other people around us, to see how we can minister to other people. You know, the Apostle Paul struggled with uh, a few ladies in the church in Philippi, and he writes a letter to them, or he writes a note to them, I should say, in chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. He says, I plead with Eodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. We don't know what it was that caused the vision amongst these two women, but they could not get along and Paul encourages them to be of the same mind. If you have a divisive mind towards other people and can't get along with others and are always thinking negative or thinking how they have hurt you in some way, you're going to struggle in life. If you want healthy thinking, we have to think of others before ourselves. How can we minister? How can we help? How can we serve others? It takes real work to see things from another viewpoint. And we want to encourage you to do that. A final point today would be that trusting God starts with our mind. In Philippians chapter four, again we read, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus. It's hard to live at peace when your mind is full of anxious thoughts and worry. And we have got to come to the place where we surrender our anxieties to Christ and we let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. God is in control and he can worry about things and look after things much better than we can. I know of people and you know of people whose minds are filled with worry. And I wanna encourage you today, if that's you, to surrender your thoughts to Christ and to know the peace of God that passes understanding and that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What you think about will determine your experience of peace. And we want you to experience the peace of Christ. God willing, we are going to continue next week talking about our thinking because it's such a valuable and important topic. And we're going to talk about how we can think in such a way to bring freedom into our lives. But today, I just want to encourage you to begin thinking about what you think about. Those thoughts will have an impact on your life spiritually physically and emotionally. And we want to encourage you to turn your mind over to Christ as well as your body. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, the scripture says to us today. I wanna to encourage you today, if by chance you are filled with thoughts of anxiety and worry, you are not living at peace in your heart today, we believe that God has an answer for that. And we believe that God can bring peace to your heart and mind. We encourage you to connect with us by texting the word connect to the number 431-400-9585. We'd love to give you some information about our church, but even more so, we'd love to give you some instructions as to good, healthy thinking. And we pray God's blessing upon you today. In a world where image is everything, how does one gauge the value of appearances? Are we defined by how we dress? 
and what we drive? Are we summarized by the size of our homes or the value of a 401k? Do we find our identity in the value of our physical assets? On the surface, we have mastered the art of appearances. In fact, we go to great lengths to maintain a picture-perfect image for whoever may glance our way. The house must be clean, the yard trimmed and neat, our clothes cool and in style. We don't miss a beat. For many of us, our days are spent polishing the surface. We scrub the exterior of life until it shines, finding comfort in the mask of our appearances. But as the demands of image and status vary for our time, it is often easy to overlook the stains that lie hidden inside. Scars of past hurts and pains have been suppressed, unsuitable for public presentation. But there is one who offers to clean us from the inside, reaching deep into our darkest corners and removing the grime that we have allowed to build. We are presented spotless, a vessel capable of containing the love that has changed our lives. The cup is clean, inside and out. 